Oh my god, it's super beautiful. I really love it. I want one. Kick down. Oh man. Big torque. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Martin and today I'm taking a look at the all new Aston Martin Vantage Roadster. Now this is the fastest roadster in the world. I'm not kidding you. The fastest opening and closing rooftop convertible in the world. Electrically that is. So let me show you. This is it, this is the car. Walk around it. Oh my God, it's super beautiful. I really love it. I want one. Jesus Christ. Start it up. Close the roof. There it goes in Guinness World Book record attempt speed. And that's it. Under seven seconds, which apparently makes it the quickest in the world i do think however it looks a bit off with the roof closed you know the voltage coupe has a beautiful roof line this not so much now with the roof down again that is super super quick that's it so the good news is that This convertible roof only adds 60 kilograms compared to the coupe, which is not that much. Normally it's like 100 or 120 kilos, but this super lightweight, easy Z folding roof is just really good, I'd say. Okay, so let's walk around the spec. We have a black pack, which means we have the front splitter in black and the side skirts and we have Aston Martin racing wheels which are an optional extra. I don't think they're that beautiful but I think the design is a bit busy, right? So Max already recorded a review with the Vantage Coupe two years ago I think that was. Go check it out in the top right corner and then come back here if you want to know more about this Roadster. Now this is an OPF car and the one Max had two years ago wasn't. So how is that going to affect the sound? I'm going to talk you through it and tell you if it influences performance too or not. Okay, so this is ceramic blue. This is an optional paint. Um, I think it would look cool on a coupe, but on a Roadster, I would like a more classic approach. I do, however, like this carbon air outlet. Um, this is the real stuff. It forces air out of the wheel arches and it's just a piece of art, this piece of carbon fiber. I think there are like 1400 euros on each side, 27, 2800 euros uh, as a pack, which I can understand because it is a piece of art if you ask me. You can have it in body paint color too, but um, these are obviously an optional extra. Now these wheels are, as I said, Aston Martin racing wheels and they are 20 inches. So now to the back of the car. I think this is one of the best rear ends ever on humans, on cars, on houses, whatever. This looks awesome. Uh, this car has a lot of optional carbon stuff. I think for like 15,000 euros worth of carbon fiber. But just look at how beautiful that is. They even match up the pattern when uh, the two come together in the center of the diffuser. It's just amazing. Back when it wasn't OPF'd, four tailpipes meant that you had the optional sports exhaust but it hasn't been specified on the spec sheet so i think this now is stock something like that don't know that aston martin ducktail it just looks so freaking awesome with that tail light in there 
oh, I mean, this, this is a beautiful car, guys. It is, it is very, very beautiful. Not too sure about the front. I think with the small headlight units, it's a bit too Mazda MX-5 for me, but hey. Uh, this, by the way, is a new grille design. It's 2,000 euros if you want this instead of the previous grille design. Not sure if it's worth the money. Okay, so let's check out the engine real quick. Where is the lever? Why can't I find it? It's on the other side. Why does this keep happening to me with Aston Martins? It's on the other side. It being right-hand drive as standard. So here we have the Mercedes AMG 4 liter V8. Final inspection by Jordan Haynes um, because Aston Martin use their own ECU and software. But this is the engine from a C63S. It's got 510 horsepower, 685 newton meters of torque, and well, it's just a masterpiece. It's one of the best engines, V8 engines ever made. And I really get why Aston Martin decided to have AMG make their V8s so they could focus on their V12s. Now, this is a masterpiece, I'm telling you guys. It's way better than the V8s of old Astons. Now, let's get driving. But as I said, that's, that engine is now OPF filtered, which never is good news, but let's see how it influences sound and performance. So let's switch the drivetrain to track mode, put it into drive. And what I really love about the setup of this car and the way you need to operate it is that you have a button right here for the suspension and a button right here for the drivetrain. So they completely separate the two, which I really love because when you start attacking a road, it's not always the same when it comes to road quality bumps, uh, tarmac. So you can easily switch between modes without uh, going through menus or having to put your hand off the steering wheel. So really, really like that. I'm going to put it into track mode, why not? Let's get going. Oh, I think we can safely say that the sound, <laughs> cool guy, GT3 owner, <laughs> it's still there. He obviously liked this car. Yeah. You do notice that when you go full throttle, it gets a bit filtered and that's the OPF of course, because the non-OPF voltages sound absolutely amazing. It's like an AMG GT, but better. Aston Martin really made an effort making this their own, um, giving it their own sound, own exhaust sound, own engine sound, and in that, they really succeeded. Okay, so let's put ESP in track mode by holding it down for four seconds. And that gives us access to launch control, which we will try in a moment. But let's do one more tunnel run because you can't do enough of those. That's such a nice sound. Okay, let's overtake this guy. Squirming around because of that 685 Newton meters, but it never gets tricky with this car because even though I have ESP system off and it's in track mode, it will always guide you 
uh, whenever needed. Which I guess is in the Aston Martin and Roadster spirit, because come on, you're not going to do burnouts or drifts with, the, with, with this car. I think it's the right way. Wind noise, however, with the top down, I think it's a bit too loud. Okay, let's do launch control. Put it into D, active. Now, when you do a launch control, I can feel the ESP still managing the power and it's a bit too kind for my taste. It doesn't allow any slip. It doesn't allow any torque really pushing through. Um, but it still does a 4.0 when I did my measurements earlier. It should do like a 3.8, 3.9. So in perfect circumstances, you will definitely hit that number, no problem. But with a more aggressive launch, like with an AMG GT, it would be faster. Oh, lovely sound. Not sure if he agrees, but <laughs> I like it. Uh, about that gearbox, they use the AMG engine, but they don't use the Mercedes gearbox. This isn't ZF 8-speed, which I think is better than um, the ones you find in the C63. Uh, the AMG GTs, however, have a better gearbox than this, which is a Gertrack unit dual clutch. But for this Roadster, I think this torque converter auto is perfect. Okay, let's close up the roof. Oh my God, it's fast. And let's head over to the Autobahn. Now with the coupe version, we did 7.9 seconds, 100 to 200, which is really, really quick. Now that was a non-OPF car. Uh, and we know that when you OPF a car, it's going to make it a bit slower, even though they claim the same horsepower numbers. We've all seen those videos, I think. Um, and the fact that we have a 60 kilo extra roof here, uh, that also influences performance. So let's see by how much. Oh, by the way, we can only do 200 kph courtesy of a German YouTuber who decided to drive on the Autobahn with a DBS Superleggera like a complete asshole. I'm not going to betray anyone, but let's just say it was a sweaty situation, which Aston Martin didn't like. And they said, okay, from now on, you can only do 200 kph on the Autobahn with our car. So we have to respect that. Let's do it. Kick down. Oh man, big torque. And that's 200 in 8.1 seconds, which is astonishing. That's really good. We have a roof with us. We have an OPF with us and it only cost us 0.2 of a second. So great job by Aston Martin, I'd say. So on the Autobahn, even though we're in track mode for the suspension, it's, it's completely fine. It's not a problem. And handling wise, uh, I don't even notice that much of a difference with uh, the coupe. I really like the rigidity of the car, the way it still feels sharp. Uh, very quick steering rack, lovely carbon fiber, uh, square steering wheel, really love the shape and feel of this. Uh, big carbon fiber, column mounted flappy paddles. It's really, really good, guys. Oh my God, it's good. Really. One of the nicest convertibles I've ever driven. And I'm not that into convertibles. I 
also really like the fact that the wind noise and the road noise in here, even though this is a very lightweight um, roof, it's not it's not loud or anything, it's not intrusive. It's so to conclude, the Aston Martin Vantage Roadster, really, really like it. Subscribe to our channel by clicking right here. Go check out this playlist or go check out this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.